Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Berry, family physician. And in this short video, I wanna discuss with you the seven best sources of DHA and EPA, essential omega-3 fatty acids that you absolutely need for brain and body health, but many people just aren't getting enough. Now, it's proven science that you need omega-3 fatty acids and that you need EPA and DHA especially, but so many people just don't know where to get it from. Also, it's been shown that EPA and DHA supplements leave a lot to be desired. They leave you lacking and oftentimes they just don't work as well as you hope they would. And then also we're gonna talk about in this video, ALA, alpha linoleic acid, and you hear about this all the time from plant-based gurus that if you eat ALA, you will convert that into DHA. And we're gonna talk about that in this video, super important information. So please watch it till the end so that you get as much value as you can out of this video. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking the subscribe button and then click the little bell button right beside it and then choose all. That way, every time I make a new video that could help improve your health, you'll get a little YouTube notification so you'll know about it and you can watch it. Before we get into the seven best food sources of DHA and EPA, I want to first go over the benefits of EPA and DHA. You may have heard of a few of these, but some of these are going to blow you away. I don't think you've probably heard of all these. First of all, for EPA, it absolutely reduces cellular inflammation. This is the chronic inflammation that makes you feel terrible and makes you die early. It can also help reduce neuroinflammation in your brain and in your nerves. So many maladies of modern society from fibromyalgia to dementia are caused by neuroinflammation and these EPA and DHA are going to help you with that. It helps you maintain a healthy cardiovascular system, your heart and your arteries and your veins. It's absolutely vital to the mental and brain development and function of all human beings, whether you're a newborn and you're, you're eating formula or you're drinking breast milk, or if you're a great grandmother, your brain will function better. It will function optimally when you've got EPA in your system, in your diet, in meaningful amounts. Also, it helps you burn excess fat. Hey, that's not bad. It helps joint health. It helps repair and renew and rejuvenate your joints. And it also helps to impair or to improve and help repair the brain. Now this, and so brain damage is improved by EPA. Now this doesn't mean that if you just, you know, if you had a motorcycle wreck and had brain damage, yes, it's gonna help that as well, but also just the chronic brain damage that we get from living in our modern society. The benefits of DHA include, but are definitely not limited to, a decrease in your blood triglycerides, and an increase in your HDL. Eating a low-carb keto carnivore diet moves all these numbers in the right direction, but DHA helps it even more. It is DHA is absolutely essential for proper, proper nerve function in your nervous system, both your nerves out in your feet and your toes and your fingers and your hands, but also the neurons in your brain function better when you give them the DHA they need and they deserve. It also helps fight inflammation. Both EPA and DHA are anti-inflammatory. Now they're not gonna fight acute inflammation, which is actually a good thing. It's the first step in the healing process. EPA and DHA are gonna help fight chronic, inappropriate, damaging inflammation, and we all need help with that. It also helps support muscle recovery. If you're starting to work out, DHA is gonna help your muscles recover faster. DHA has been shown in multiple studies to lower your blood pressure, EPA as well. It can also decrease your all-cause mortality, improve your risk of not dying. And also it's been shown in studies to protect your telomeres, which if you're in the biohacking or the life extension community, you know that the longer your telomeres are, the better you function and the longer you live. The second thing you should know about DHA and EPA is that they are essential omega-3 fatty acids. This means that your body cannot manufacture them. You have to get them in your diet and you have to get them in meaningful amounts in your diet. 
Third, what's the amount of, of DHA and EPA you should get a day? You should try to get at least 500 milligrams, and I would prefer you get up to 2,000 or even 3,000 milligrams of these essential omega-3 fatty acids every day in your diet. If you're eating the standard American diet, then you're not gonna come anywhere close to that amount. A lot of people recommend supplements, but the problem is, is that supplements don't really raise the meaningful tissue levels of DHA and EPA like we would like for them to. We're not sure if it's the production process, the manufacturing process, the sourcing, we're not sure why, but the supplements, the fish oil capsules that you've seen so widely and heavily uh, advertised just don't work. And the final point I wanna make before we get into the seven best sources of DHA and EPA is that you hear all the time from plant-based gurus from vegans, from vegetarians, that you can get all the DHA and EPA you need from your diet by eating plants because there's something in plants called ALA that will give you, that, that is converted by your body into DHA and EPA. Now, there is some conversion, but it's very, very poorly done. When you, your body's not good at converting ALA to DHA and EPA. Your body would much prefer that you eat foods containing DHA and EPA. It doesn't want a supplement. It doesn't want you to eat plants that have ALA. It wants you to eat foods that contain DHA and EPA. The research shows us that ALA is converted uh, to EPA at about a 6% rate. So if you eat 100 milligrams of ALA, you're gonna get about six milligrams of EPA. Same goes for DHA. If you eat 100 milligrams of ALA, on average, you can convert about four milligrams to DHA. And so you can quickly see you'd have to eat pounds and pounds of vegetables a day to get the amount of DHA and EPA that your brain, your nerves, your muscles, and all the rest of your body needs on a daily basis. Even very large vegan influencers like uh, Dr. Greger, Dr. Furman, and Dr. Dioulis recommend that you take a DHA and EPA supplement because they're well aware that you cannot convert enough ALA into DHA or ALA into EPA to be meaningful for your health, and both physical and mental. Uh, and so if these guys recommend that you take a DHA EPA supplement, you should. At this point, I would say, you know what? I understand that some people don't feel right about eating furry animals that have faces and moms and perhaps emotions. 100% understand that. But you'll see from the seven foods I talk about below, you can get all the DHA and EPA and, and actually all the essential amino uh, fatty acids that you need without eating anything that's furry and cute and cuddly and has a mom and a face. Now let's get into the seven best food sources of DHA and EPA that you can eat. And I want you to eat at least one serving of these on a daily basis. If you do that, they're also high in DHA and EPA. You're gonna get at least 500 milligrams. If you love some of these foods and you wanna eat more, you absolutely can. There's no such thing as an omega-3 fatty acid overdose. You can't eat too much of these things. Uh, also, a lot of these things contain vitamin A and vitamin D. Uh, you might be told by some people, oh, you shouldn't eat that too often. You might get a vitamin A or vitamin D toxicity. There's actually, this is not true. And the reason I say that is there's never been a single case study reported in the entirety of medical literature showing that someone from eating actual real whole foods has gotten a vitamin A or a vitamin D toxicity syndrome. It just doesn't happen. Now, taking vitamin A supplements, vitamin D supplements, you may take too much and get a high level of vitamin A or vitamin D. Uh, also vitamin K and vitamin A, that can happen as well. But these foods, you, there is not a single case report in the entire medical and nutritional research compiled by mankind ever in the history of our species. Was that a little overboard? I, I want you to get the point. That's ever shown that anyone who ate too much of these foods got vitamin A toxicity, omega-3 fatty acid toxicity, or vitamin D, vitamin E, or vitamin K2 toxicity. It just doesn't happen if you're eating real food. Now the foods. Number one is mackerel. This is a small cold water fish, chock full of DHA and EPA, and it, it, it's, it's very inexpensive, it's very easy to find, and so if you eat a serving of mackerel a day, you're gonna get your DHA and EPA. Number two is salmon. Now, of course, you wanna get wild-caught, uh, sustainably 
raised and, and resourced salmon. You don't want farm raised si salmon that's, that's fed crap. You don't want that. You want to get the real deal from the ocean. Uh, these are rich in the omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA. Next is my favorite, fish roe, which is fish eggs. There are some versions of this that people call caviar. These are so rich in omega-3 fatty acids, the DHA and the EPA, only a tiny bit is all you need every day. I actually mix this in with my mustard. There's multiple ways that you can use this. Uh, it is pricey, but you only need such a tiny amount that it actually becomes quite affordable to keep a jar of fish roe in the fridge and just take out a little a spoonful every day. Number four is cod liver. This is another, my second favorite. I love cod liver. It comes in a little tin like sardines or herring or anchovies. It comes in cod oil. And so the oil in there is not cod liver oil, it's just cod oil. And cod liver is very mild. If you don't like beef or chicken liver, cod liver is a great way to get the multivitamin that's in all liver, but you also get your DHA and EPA in just astronomical amounts. Uh, let me say at this point that you can also buy salmon oil or cod liver oil, and they're super rich in DHA or EPA and EPA, but they don't, uh, some people hate the taste of cod liver oil and salmon oil. I actually bought some cod liver oil. I'm gonna put a link to everything I talk about down below. Uh, and I, I actually like it. And so I t I'm taking a tablespoon of that a day if I don't eat my uh, sardines or my cod liver or my fish roe. Number five is herring, another small cold water fish. And you may be worried about the mercury and other toxins in the ocean by eating these ocean fish. But here's the thing, all these fish that I talk about <clears throat> are either protected up in the, the, the most northern latitudes and don't really get as much pollution, or they're very small fish and they tend to eat algae and they don't eat other fish. And so they're not very high on the food chain. And so I would avoid swordfish and other fish that basically live off eating smaller fish because they're magnifying the amount of mercury and other toxins in their flesh. That's absolutely true. But small cold water fish, that don't tend to eat other fish, they don't build up the toxic amounts of mercury and other toxins that are found in our modern oceans. And so you don't have to worry about that. Number seven is my wife Nisha's favorite. If you don't know my wife, she has a YouTube channel and other social media. If you'll just type in Nisha loves it, you'll find her. She loves oysters. She loves them raw on the half shell. Her and I both together have probably eat, eaten 100,000 oysters in our, in our lifetime. We've never had any problem with infection or toxins or anything else. They're very, very rich in DHA and EPA, and also they're a great source of zinc if you're looking for that. Now, some people don't like oysters, and I understand that, but if, you, if, you don't, if you've never tried them, please try them at least one time on the half shell with a drop of lemon oil and maybe a little horseradish. They're divine. Number seven is uh, is sardines. Absolutely love sardines in the can. Do not get them in oil because it'll be either soybean or canola oil, and you don't want that. They're they're way too rich in omega six fatty acids. Get them in water, and then if you want to add a good omega three three rich oil to it, you can. But uh, sardines are great sources of DHA, EPA. They're super cheap. They're available in every super, uh, supermarket. So they're, it's not impossible to afford them and it's also not impossible to find them like some of the other sources of DHA and EPA. Also, if you're eating sardines, you're eating nose to tail. And so I really like that. There's not a single part of the fish that's wasted. You're eating the entire fish. And that's, that's amazing because anytime we can eat nose to tail, that way we honor the animal, we don't waste any of the animal, and I think that's a much more sustainable way to get our DHA and EPA. Now, a bonus source of DHA and EPA, Nisha loves these, I don't love them that much, but some people do, is anchovies. Anchovies are a small, cold water fish, so they're very safe to eat. They are chocked full of DHA and EPA. Yeah, you may have heard of anchovies on pizza, but there's actually a ton of recipes. Uh, Caesar salad, if it's done correctly, should have some anchovies in it. Uh, so eat, try some anchovies. And I want you, I want to challenge you that if you've never tried one of these on the list, I want you to try it at least one time because you might be surprised at how much you love it.
I've included links to all of these foods in the show notes down below. If you're on your phone watching this, just scroll through the videos and then you'll find the show notes. If you're on a laptop, it's right there, very easy to find. Also, I've put links to all the research that I talked about in the making of this video so you can check it out for yourself. Don't blindly believe me or any other doctor or nutritionist or health guru out there. I want you to always check the source. Now, if you know someone who's who's interested and who's concerned about the brain health or their nerve health, please share this video with them. If you know a breastfeeding mom, or more importantly, if you know a mom who's bottle feeding with formula, please share this video with them. They need to know how the, a, a human brain is built in, a, in, a, in an infant, and it's not with uh, corn solids and soybean. That's not how you build a healthy human brain. Also, if you know a mom, dad, grandfather, great grandmother who's concerned about the function of their nerves or their brain, this is the stuff that gives you optimal nerve and brain function. Please share this video with them. Okay, this is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.